Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. It is the uh, second Sunday of Advent. Um, and we have in uh, the Advent season some uh, different things in uh, the way that our service begins. So our uh, uh, confession of forgiveness will be on the insert uh, in your bulletin or on the screen. Uh, and then uh, we have 
instead of the, uh, the curie, we'll have a, uh, um, a litany where it says Advent litany and candle lighting on the other side of that insert. That's also on the screen. Um, and the song that we're uh, singing uh, for the candle lighting is, uh, uh, again, a, uh, a newer hymn of the tune uh, we've known before. But uh, uh, So I forgot to print more copies of that, so that's not necessarily in your insert. It will be on the screen, but if you want the music, uh, Pastor Priscilla uh, has got some copies she made up. So they're not in the bulletin, but if you'd like... Uh, Copy the music for that. Yeah, there are a person who likes to read music with the song or familiar. I do make a few more copies. So easier to see the bring you the way. So we have. Uh, Also for uh, the season of Advent, uh, we are having uh, Bible study time uh, still in, when, on Wednesday morning at 9, or we also have the Bible study Wednesday evening at 7, uh, and with a uh, service of holding evening prayer afterwards. Uh, so we have uh, either of those opportunities to uh, reflect this Advent season. Uh, if you uh, have not yet gotten tickets for the Christmas tea and concert and have been meaning to do that, uh, please contact Sarah. It would be uh, uh, a whole lot easier for her and her preparation. Uh, to, uh, but even if you decide late, still come, let me know. <laughs> yeah, but sooner it will be more helpful. So, uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, Matt, can I tag on? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm doing things in shifts, so if anybody has a few extra minutes after church and would like to help me, my car is just loaded to the brink with stuff that needs to be carried in, and I can use some help if you have time to help me. I'm parked outside the kitchen door. And then next Sunday after church, if anyone would like to hang out to help set up the parish hall, with tables and chairs and stuff, that would be most appreciated. Um, I will probably have a funny look on my face that whole day because I'm going to be stressed out, so to ignore that and just know that if you want to help, the answer's yes. <laughs> all right, thank you very much for all your work. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, I have a uh, uh, announcement for uh, the prayer list. Uh, We'll be remembering uh, the family of uh, Lynn Wilkin, this is Irv's uh, sister-in-law, um, who uh, uh, died on Friday. Uh, and so we'll be uh, uh, keeping the family of uh, Lynn Wilkin in prayers. Uh, do we have other updates or additions for our prayer list? Just really quick, if you are planning to be in the youth um, program on the 24th or have youth that are coming into town on the 24th, if I could talk to you for just a minute after church, that would be excellent. So, thank you. All right. Any other announcements this morning? All right, then we'll begin our worship uh, with our Advent Confession Forgiveness. Uh, in your bulletin or on the screen. <clears throat> Blessed be God who prepares the world in this time and throughout time to welcome the news of salvation, justice, and a new way to live through the birth and return of God's only Son. Knowing our hearts are never fully where they should be, we turn to you, Lord, and confess. We confess, we confess the sins, sins of our hearts, our heads, and our lips. We admit that we have fallen short in our calling to love you, to love our neighbor, even to love ourselves as you have loved us. We find reasons to hate 
reasons to keep separated, and reasons to hurt one another time and again. And those are just the harms we know. Please, Lord, walk with us, wait with us, and forgive us again. People of the eternal God, rejoice. God forgives our sins. God hears the cries of our heartaches, our weaknesses, and our pain, and comes to us. Our sins are forgiven, and our spirits renewed. Amen. There are times in the dark places of life, O Lord, where we, we cry out, out how long? How long must there be suffering and sorrow? How long must our hearts ache? When will we know peace and wholeness? When will our lives be restored? We long for your action now. Even as we wait. People of God, the Lord tells us today to prepare the way of the Lord. As we face the struggles and pain of this world, it focuses us on God's will for justice and restoration. And our crying out in the wilderness prepares our hearts for God who will come to us.
us join together in the prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with your five lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today comes from Isaiah 40, the first 11 verses. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, and surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's, the mother's sheep. Here ends the first reading. The psalm for today is Psalm 85, 1 through 2, and 8 through, 11, through 13. Let's read responsively, please. You have been gracious to your hand, land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. The second reading for today comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to re repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, 
waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Here ends the second reading. I invite the kids to come forward for children's message. How are y'all doing this morning? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate the honesty. All I want to do is go back to bed. I understand. We all feel that way sometimes, don't we? That's for sure. Oh, well, I'll, I'll try to uh, <laughs> help you one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Either we can help wake you up or uh, get you a nap. Either way, may God bless you. So, uh, did anybody uh, bring your your camel's hair coat this morning? Like 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 a you know a coat or or just so your clothes aren't made of camel's hair? No. Have Have you ever petted a camel? Yeah, I have. Yeah, but also kind of, you know, rough hair. It's not, yeah, yeah. And you have to watch out. Uh, they're, they're mouthy, too. If you ever been to a place where you feed them, and they might uh, have a mouth on you. But yeah, they can spit if they're, if they're upset. But <clears throat> camel's hair, I think, is supposed to be pretty, uh, pretty rough as something to, uh, to take and, and make clothes out of. Yeah. Yeah, yep, they can. So they store that water in, the, in that hump on their back, which is actually a big hump My of fat. My dad has a girlfriend that would always ask how far it was from Florida and go to Toronto for him. Mm. And the lava kept running up every time he went because it ran up and bit on him. Oh. <laughs> yep, <laughs> they can. Yep, if they get upset, they'll do that. Well, what about did, did uh, anybody eat your bugs this morning? No? You didn't, didn't eat bugs for breakfast. Oh, I had buffalo chicken omelet. Okay, well, that's probably good. So, I had a buffalo chicken omelet. Uh, <laughs> you didn't have a... So, there's this guy that... Uh, uh, his name was John. Uh, and, John the Baptist? Uh, people call him John the Baptist because he was out uh, baptizing people. And it's a little different than how we think about baptism because it wasn't really it wasn't the church yet Jesus hadn't done his ministry yet so uh, Jesus was alive but but it was a baptism of washing of cleansing and it was a sign of people um, saying I'm I'm washed I'm ready to to refocus on uh, on God to, to turn myself around and look for God and so John was out in the wilderness preaching and baptizing people uh, in, in a river. And, uh, and people were coming out from the city, out to the wilderness. And John was just living out there wild, uh, wearing clothes made of camel's hair, eating locusts and, uh, and wild honey. So locusts are bugs. You know, just eating what he could find, just living out there off of, uh, off of whatever he could find that uh, God provided. And preaching to people, and people looked at him, and they they remembered uh, these the verses that we had in our first lesson. that said, "There's a voice of one crying out in the wilderness: Prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight. Uh, every uh, every hill should be made low, every valley lifted up, and all the crooked places made straight." And and this is what John was doing, preparing the way of the Lord. Um, and now, 
for God to come to us, God doesn't need us to do something to allow God to come, right? Uh, God can, can come to us because God chooses to, right? So prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight, doesn't mean, oh, something's getting in the way of God. But what it is is that things can get in the way of people being able to recognize or be ready to see God coming. And that's what John was doing, is that he was uh, getting people ready to see that God had come to them. And he didn't even really know exactly what this was. Jesus was like his cousin. Uh, Jesus was, was John's second cousin. They, um, we presume, knew each other. Uh, but John the Baptist wasn't out there at that time saying, and it's this guy. But uh, later, at a different time, we'll see it when Jesus comes to him. John recognizes, oh, this is what I've been talking about. But what he's doing is he's getting people to realize, one, the things in their own lives that are keeping them um, from seeing God, if they're just focused on themselves. Um, and, you know, so many things that we do that are wrong and we call sin, that are, it's a lot of selfishness serving ourselves and not thinking about what's good for other people. Um, and so, Part of John getting people to turn around and to see and preparing the way of the Lord was getting people to see I need I need to recognize that I need God and but also making those like uh, um, the mountains made low and the, and the valleys lifted up it's like where there are bigger ways in which people selfishness puts maybe some people seen as being better or more important than others and some people being down here and for all kinds of reasons, um, people are kept like that. There are things in the world or, or where it's like people feel like they don't have a clear path to God because other people make it uh, harder for, for them to live. All the stuff that people do that, that makes life harder for one another is also stuff that we need to recognize, hey, that's wrong, that's not how it should be. Preparing the way of the Lord, looking for God to come is also to say, hey, Stuff that's not right for people is not what God wants. So preparing the way of the Lord, like John the Baptist was doing, was getting people to say, you know what? God coming to us means God wants things to be good for you. God wants to be with you. You are worthwhile to God, every one of you. And recognize uh, that it's not about serving ourselves. It's about being loved by God. And so in this time of Advent, we can look at things um, and, and realize that, you know, you know, when you see things, you're like, man, the world shouldn't be like that. That's bad. That's rough. God is coming to us. And so we hear that good news to prepare our hearts and we'll celebrate it at Christmas. We also look for, for Jesus to come and to make everything the way that it should be. Um, so let's pray. God, prepare our hearts to look for you, to turn around and, and to see um, the good news of you coming to us. Thank you for, for helping us to see that you choose us, that we can focus our lives on that good news and, and we can look for you to restore uh, everything in our lives and, and in all creation. Um, Lord, help us to see you coming. Prepare our hearts. Amen.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There we go. <clears throat> well, then, uh, let's see. In our uh, 17th year that we were married, we uh, Priscilla and I took our 15th anniversary trip, uh, which was not to... Uh, Ireland is originally planned because things had changed with the airlines and we went to Costa Rica, which is somewhere else that we uh, had an idea that, that we might like to go and it was a, a wonderful place to, uh, to visit, but it's not an easy place to get around um, because, uh, uh, you know, you can look at a very, very, very small country, um, but so many mountains and valleys and, uh, and the roads take uh, the the easiest path, not <laughs> the straightest path, and uh, so you can look at some place and and think, looking at it on a map, oh, you could get there, you know, in a half hour, but it's going to take you three hours uh, because of the way that you have to go on the roads going around uh, things, and uh, so we just had to uh, to learn that and uh, and plan that time. Uh, they uh, they don't have tunnels cutting through mountains or anything like that. You just take your way around, and, and some of the ways are even uh, um, uh, when you're getting up into the mountains, just dirt or gravel roads. Um, we had quite the experience coming down one of those gravel roads, but uh, it uh, it takes some time to get around when you have to wind around the mountains and the valleys. And uh, now we've had some times on family trips where uh, we had some experiences intentionally taking the, the winding road uh, up and over mountains. Uh, did that uh, in the Smokies uh, one time, took a, a gravel road up over the mountain through uh, Smoky Mountain National Park. Uh, this was my idea. Uh, <laughs> well, everyone experienced it. Uh, <laughs> because uh, because they're laughing at the fact that uh, Pastor Priscilla did not make the decision to take the gravel road up over the mountain. Uh, I thought it was, and it, it was uh, plenty of time to experience the beauty of the mountains. Uh, unfortunately, the the gaslight came on just a little ways into it, <laughs> but we made it. <laughs> but there's uh, that that road is uh, is very close to uh, Interstate 40 that goes through a pass uh, in in between uh, places in the mountains. So it's a lot easier to go uh, at higher speeds and straight on through. And you could be in 10 minutes through this spot that uh, it took you know uh, an hour and a half or something to go through 11 miles. Um, so. But that's the difference between uh, the, the long and winding road, uh, the hills and the valleys, 
and and the straight path if it's made uh, uh, flat and and clear. Um, we did it a couple years ago in the Rockies too. Went up over uh, I think Independence Pass where you could you could take uh, I seventy and go right through the tunnel through the mountain. Um, but uh, decided to go up and over the. I know Isaiah particularly enjoyed that uh, <laughs> winding road where. You can't even tell that you're on a mountain still because you just see the going down. Um, so you have this uh, metaphor of, of make, uh, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight. Uh, every mountain hill should be made low and every valley lifted up. Uh, we have this metaphor, but what is it for? And thinking of life, you know, there are twists and turns, there's the unexpected, there's the longer road, things that we have to go around, work our way, and, and progress is slow, um, things that can make life harder and, and with the unexpectedness. Um, but if you think about, like, uh, mountain roads sometimes, uh, or, or even where I live, where it's not mountains, but it's just uh, some... Uh, creeks and other things, if you don't have the twists and turns, then you have going up and down, it's a lot steeper. And so it's harder that way um, if you don't have those twists and turns. But then the ups and downs, the highs and lows, um, those, those can be things that we feel, right? We all know um, and we may have, you know, some, uh, we all have daily ups and downs and then we have bigger ups and downs, things that are really hard, uh, you know, where you're really know that you're in the valley you really feel it and you may not even see the light um, and and then times where things seem good and clear and you can you can see um, a lot better but there are also other kinds of ups and downs because uh, um, you you may have or certainly there are people who have um, uh, a lot of power, a lot of control in their life and in their sphere of things and people who just don't have uh, the ability and, and we all have this sometimes and some people have it all the time. No resources, no ability to affect or to make things better. Uh, just really at the bottom um, of, of life and, and things going on in the world. Um, and uh, and it can be something, just the situation that a person is, is born into, and, and it can be situations that change and, and happen to us. Um, there can be having a lot of opportunity or a little, you know, just being on the top or being on the bottom of the world. And when you're on the bottom or have a long way to go, it's rough. And it's harder to make it out. Um, if you're, uh, you know, running out of fuel and don't have any way to get some, it's harder to make it out when it's a long road or a steep climb. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And in Isaiah, we hear, what should I cry? The grass withers and the flower fades. Things don't last. In life, it can be easy to give up because everything dies, everything fades. What hope do we have to ever make anything better in the world? There's a voice that cries out, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the royal highway. Make God's path straight. Bring the high places down and the low places up until they are level even. Now prepare the way of the Lord. What does that mean? Can't God come anyway? Does God depend on us making a way for God to get to us? Do we have to create the path so that God can come to us? And these things are so hard. Why not just let God come whenever and, and God, you fix it because we can't. We need to be preparing the way of the Lord because it's important for us to care about the way things are and the way things should be, to be looking for what God is about, God's ways of doing things, what, what God wants in the world. 
It's important to be a voice that's crying out, that's wanting things to be better when they need to be better. What should I cry out? Prepare the way of the Lord. Make God's path straight. Make the way level and even. It's important that we care about what God is about, that we be looking for it. If we want God to come make things better, it's important to care. It's important to care that some people are stuck down in the valley of the shadow of death. It's important to care that some are stuck winding around obstacle after obstacle, looking for some way that things might be better in life. It's important to care that there are people who are hungry every day. It's important to care that innocent people are killed by bombs and bullets. It's important to care that some people are crawling through the desert because they're so desperate for a better chance in life. It's important to care that there are kids who aren't safe in their own homes. It's important to care that there are people that we know and people we don't know who are struggling just to get out of bed and face the next day. It's important to care that some people feel pushed away from churches. It's important to care because people need someone to care for them when they have nothing else. It's important that those who are looking for God's coming care about what we believe God is coming to do and put our hearts into that and put ourselves with people who God is coming to. It aligns our hearts with what God is about, and this is something we need in order to see how God comes to the world. It's important to care. Now, it's hard to care. Even in our own struggles, it's hard to care. It can wear us down. When we care and we're waiting for and looking for something different, it can be frustrating. It can make you cry out, How long? How long, Lord? When? When will it be better? Whether it's other people's struggles that you care about or your own struggles, it can make you angry and it can make you tired. It's hard to care. But God can handle our questioning and even our anger. God wants us to cry out because it's better to cry out in the wilderness than to stop caring about things being better. It's better to cry out in the wilderness than to stop caring about whether the paths of life are straight and level. Again, it aligns our hearts with what God wants to care, to trust that God does want what's good and what's better. It's hard to care, but it's better to care about what is good and what's right, to cry out for it, to long for it, to live with it, than to just give up and accept wrong things and bad things and destructive things and heartbreaking things, just as way of the world. Because care about what's good and what's right is to see what God is about and and that leads us to become part of it. That as God comes into our hearts as we realize that that Jesus has come, that God in Jesus and, and because we do know the whole story, right? As we're looking to Advent, we, we know that Jesus has come. We know that Jesus has joined with us uh, even in death on the cross. That God has joined to us in ways that we cannot be separated from God, even though we hurt. Because we know that, that as we look for God coming, we also know that we are the ones who are following where God goes. And so we're called to go to one another. In our in our caring, we are coming with God to one another. So part of Advent is being honest about what needs to be better in the world. 
realizing it's okay to be honest about what we need to be better and caring about it even though it's hard. It's not saying to burn ourselves out, but just to truly care and truly want what is good. Because if we join John in crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make God's path straight. If we look for the day when every valley will be lifted up and every hill and mountain be made low, then our hearts and the hearts of those who hear us cry out can be prepared to see the good news of God who comes to us who is with us in everything. Lord, prepare our hearts to celebrate your coming and to look for you to come again. Help us to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen.
Pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we pray for your church. Help us to prepare our own hearts, prepare the world, prepare the way that we and others may see your coming, may see the goodness that you bring. We may trust in that and rely on it, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who need restoration and hope, for those who are cold and in need of shelter, for those who are hungry and in need of food, for those who are in danger and in need of protection and of peace, for those who are oppressed and in need of freedom, those who are thirsty and need even just clean water. Lord, for all who are struggling, for all who are finding it hard to even look to tomorrow, we pray for the help we need and we pray that we may be moved to Prepare the way for a better life for them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for all who need healing. As we remember the needs of Irene, Lee, Al, Lisa, Shirley, Julia, Marilyn, Don, Heidi, 
Bonnie, Bill, Bob, Tim, Mason, Dawson, Rod, Pat, Joanne, Gary, Char, Jeff, Connor, Steve, George, Mike, Kate, and all for whom we pray for healing. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who grieve, remembering today the family of Lynn. Give all in their grief trust in you, knowledge of your gift of eternal life and redemption. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. With your hands, O oh Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let's pray. <clears throat> As our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now the author of creation, the word in flesh, and the spirit of guidance be with us in these days of preparation and watching.
Um, I forgot to announce this morning, uh, my kids and I would like to host a chili soup dinner before uh, evening uh, Christmas Eve dinner or, or services at 630. So if anybody would like to come and join us, we'll be having chili and soup for dinner. Yeah, survivor service, that will be at 830 Christmas Eve night that I recommend the bulletin. So separate 630, service at 830. So.